It's time for another pop date with Mumbles and Mr. Dancer. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Mumbles and Dancer Pop Dates. Last week, we talked about firework safety, and during that episode, I mentioned that it is at this time that more dogs get loose than any other time of the year. So today, I wanted to cover the topic of what to do if you find a lost slash homeless dog. So here's some tips coming up, and we're going to jump into that right now. So guys, last week, I talked about firework safety with your dog and how to help them through the anxiety of any fireworks display, whether it be 4th of July or whatever. I also mentioned during that video that it is at 4th of July time that more dogs go missing than any other time in the year. They get spooked, they get out, and they get loose, and then they're out there in the world. So today I thought, hmm, you know what I want to do? I want to try to help some of those dogs that do get out and some of those dogs that do get lost and people who lose their dogs. I want to try to do the best I can to help them. So today we're going to be covering the topic of what to do if you find a lost slash homeless dog. So guys, I have some tips to help you guys along the way. The first thing I do want to mention though, I want to, I want to caution everybody on this. Be careful when approaching any wild animal. I'm not advocating for you to go and approach a wild animal. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm simply helping you along the way if you decide to do it. You have to be careful with any wild animal because they are a wild animal. It's that simple. So guys, my first tip today is be careful when approaching any lost or stray dog. Even if you know the dog and it's a neighborhood dog, be careful when approaching it. Just because you think the dog is friendly does not mean the dog is friendly. Again, as I said earlier, I'm not advocating for anyone to approach a lost or stray dog. I'm just telling you how to do it. So some of the signs you're going to want to look for to decide whether or not it's okay to approach a dog is its body language. Just because the dog has its tail wagging does not mean it is a friendly dog. Does not mean it's not scared. Does not mean it's not aggressive. A dog's tail wagging only means that they have stimuli. So something is making their tail wag. You know, they see something or oh, whatever. Guys, you're going to want to look for the telltale signs. Are they acting aggressively? Are there, is their hair standing on end? Are they showing their teeth? Are they growling? You're going to want to look for those signs in deciding whether or not to approach. If they are showing those signs, do not approach the dog. Instead, what you're going to want to do is, if you can, get a picture of the dog. And then contact your nearest animal shelter or animal control so that they can help get a hold of the dog. Do not approach a dog that is acting aggressively. My second tip today is, if you do decide that the dog looks friendly and is not showing any aggressive signs, what you're going to want to do is approach the dog at a sideways motion. So what you're going to want to do is turn your body to the side and approach them kind of like this. It's less threatening to dogs. Then what you're going to want to do is extend your hand for them to sniff. If this doesn't work and they still don't want to come to you, you can offer them treats to kind of coax them to your car or to you. And you can do things that way if it helps get the dog to safety better. There's no nothing against giving them treats if you have to. The main thing you're going to want to remember when approaching any animal is stay calm. Do not panic. Panicking will alert the dog that, hey, something's wrong, this person's panicking, blah, 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 I'm, I'm getting out of here. So you're going to want to stay calm. Guys, now my third tip today is based on the fact that, hey, you got a hold of the dog. So the first thing you're going to want to do is look over the dog and make sure the dog isn't injured. The dog is injured. Take your dog to the vet. ASAP. Take it to a shelter. Take it to the vet. Take it to some place that can help the dog get medical attention that it needs. It's that simple. Don't worry about finding its owner. Don't worry about anything. Get the dog to the vet. Period. End of story. So guys, now my fourth tip for you guys today, after you've checked the dog over to make sure you know it's not hurt or anything, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have the, a separate place for the dog. So, you know, even if they have a, a, an ID or whatever on them, you're going to need a place where you can keep the dog. And you're going to want to keep this dog separated from your own dogs. The dog could be sick. It could be aggressive to other dogs. It could only like people and not be a, a dog dog. So... Some dogs get very nervous around other dogs. So you're going to want to have a separate place for the dog so that they can be happy and content. A place with fresh water, some food, and lots of air and ventilation. So you're not going to want to pen them up or anything like that. So maybe if you have a safe spot in your backyard, you can put them back there or whatever. So guys, the fifth tip today is check the dog for ID. Obviously, if they have a collar with a phone number on it, that makes things very easy. But not all dogs do. Sometimes the collar can get off. Maybe the owner was giving the dog a bath and it slipped out of the collar and got away. If things, these things do happen. So if the dog does not have ID on them, you also have the option of checking for a microchip in their ear. 
Some dogs have it, some dogs don't. Your vet or local animal shelter will be able to scan and see if they have one. Beyond that, what you can also do is call animal control, let them know, hey, I found this dog, I'm keeping it for now, but please know the description. You can do that with all the animal shelters and things around you so that they all know if anyone comes in looking for a dog, hey, this dog's at this person's house. So the, the sixth and final tip is, if, there's, if all these other steps fail, if you can't find ID, if there's no microchip, if, if it's just you can't find the owner, what you can do in addition to you know calling and letting these places know that you have this dog is begin to share the information in the story online. So Facebook, things like that, there's all kinds of different groups for lost dogs. You can start sharing it and getting the word around, Twitter, things like that. But you can also put up posters of, uh, with a picture of the dog and the information of how to contact you and things like that. So that is another way that you can get word to mouth out about this dog and hopefully help them. Worst comes to worst, guys, you do probably have the option of keeping the dog, you know, if it's healthy and everything. So guys, if nothing else, maybe you can give the dog a safe home and a happy forever home. But obviously the ultimate goal is to help them find their owners because they're missing their owners just as much as their owners are missing them. So guys, these have been the steps that I wanted to give you guys to help you in the event that you do find a stray or homeless dog. So above all, I just want to say, please do stay safe. Again, I'm not advocating for anyone to approach any wild animal or dog. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, don't do it. But please get a hold of the authorities, get a picture if you can, get some description about the dog so that it can be found and the authorities can help the dog get to where it needs to be. So guys, hopefully these tips help you. Now I'm going to go get the answer and we're going to finish up this video. Anyways guys, now as with every week, to bring you guys a smile on your face hopefully, we're going to do our pup and play section where you get to see Dancer have some fun. And here he is. Anyways, guys, this has been another episode of Mumbles and Dancer Pup Dates. I want to thank you guys all so much for joining me. Please stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. And Dancer wants to thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. And this is Mumbles and Dancer signing off. Bye-bye.